Hello, today I will be presenting my top five picks for power adapters on the market today. Since I have already reviewed the technical details for these in depth, I won't get into all the specifics in this video, but I'll leave links to my full reviews of all the adapters in the description if you want all the gory details. I wanted to make this video because it's impossible to tell you what it's like to live with one of these power adapters from just a technical analysis. Now that I've lived with these five power adapters for a while, I thought it would be helpful for you to see which ones that I end up using on a near daily basis out of the hundred or so I've tested over the past year. I'll go over some of my opinions about why I chose these particular models, as well as some positives and negatives to each, so you can see if one of them might work for your situation. If you are new here, I will try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on, and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel contributors. All right, first, we need a little background. There are many levels of power adapters. Why are there so many? Aren't there standards for all of these things? Basically, there are some core standards that exist, like the USB power delivery specification, currently in the 3.1 edition. This provides guidance for the power output, voltages, and negotiation techniques for power adapters. Manufacturers don't have to adhere to these specifications, though. Many devices still use proprietary protocols or standards that are still useful and are needed for different power adapters and requirements. These are beyond the scope of the basic USB power adapters though. The standard USB power delivery specification with USB-C ports uses a couple of pins on the USB cable to negotiate the power delivery. These power delivery modes can include lots of different voltages and currents. The maximum current also requires cables with special chips in them, called EMARC cables. The latest edition adds more modes called Extended Power Range, or EPR, and uses yet another chip configuration. The reason for this extra chip in both cases is to protect lower voltage devices from being exposed to conditions that could potentially damage them, and it also makes sure that the cable can properly handle the higher current of the higher wattage modes. Different devices need different power levels, and using a lower voltage means that current is higher for the same power level. USB power always starts at 5 volts for backwards compatibility. You can't use this 5 volts to supply a 100 watt laptop though because the current would be far too high and the cable would likely end up like this. We don't want that, so the device being plugged in has to negotiate for more voltage in order to charge at its most optimal rate. Some devices can negotiate for higher voltages of 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts for the standard ranges, and the EPR ranges of 28, 36, and up to 48 volts. There's also a variable voltage range for both standard and EPR devices. The variable voltage is called Programmable Power Supply, or PPS. The devices that support PPS modes can charge a little more efficiently by eliminating an extra stage of voltage conversion. This means the battery can charge faster and keep the phone cooler while charging. So there's lots of options. It comes down to what you need. A phone may only need 10 to 20 watts to really charge during most of its charging cycle. Some can go a little faster, 30 to 40 watts, but usually only for a short period of time. Some of the really fast charging devices use custom charging protocols and therefore aren't very broadly useful and also they require a special charger. The confusion here is that they may also use a USB-C port and so they aren't all created equal just because it is the same port. Tablets have a little bit larger batteries and generally they need a little more charging power. These can often use 30 watts for charging or a little more. They still generally have lower voltage batteries though so they don't use the higher PD voltages. 5 or 9, 12, maybe 15, but generally not the 20 volts, which is often used by the next category. Laptops use a little more power and often have multi-cell batteries, which means higher voltages. In general, laptops use the higher voltage 20 and 28 volt USB power delivery modes. As of now, laptops can charge from 30 watts up to 140 watts from USB-C ports. They often need a minimum of 20 volt from the PD devices to be able to charge. Some lower power adapters may be able to charge a laptop, but won't be able to power and charge a laptop at the same time. Other accessories that either need power or need to charge like camera batteries, Bluetooth speakers, power banks, or even LED lights can also be USB powered. These can be all over for power needs, but many of the devices I have are USB-A devices or five volt only devices. Lots of small power adapters can fill this gap or a larger power adapter with an extra port. Okay, let's finally get to the adapters. Category one, the big adapters. 
For the larger 140 watt adapter category, the ID Mix or any of its many, many clones is my pick. I don't really use this a lot since the only device I have that uses this is the 140 watt Anchor power bank. I really only have to charge this about once a month with my general use case. For adapters larger than 140 watts, the Anchor 150 watt 747 is the choice adapter. It stays cool under operation and is reliable. The power adapter can do more with its generous power sharing also. Any of these larger adapters are really aimed at laptops and larger devices. They are wasteful to charge something as small as a phone. With any of these adapters, you get lots of modes of operation. Although, note, the Anchor typically doesn't have a 12 volt mode. Category two is my daily driver. The best keep it at home adapter I use for the 100 watt adapters are both the desktop and the wall mount Bassius offerings. Both of these adapters have excellent performance. In fact, the best for this category. I've been using them for a while now for laptops, power banks, watch, phones, and camera battery charging, among other things. My devices are always charged and I don't think about it too much beyond that. I think for a keep it at home adapter, the 100 watt category is the most interesting. I actually take the Bassius wall adapter with me when traveling too since it is smaller than taking a laptop adapter and a smaller power adapter. Bassius being a relatively new company means they have some quality control issues though, so the risk of it breaking is higher versus a well-established company. Category three is what I call portable, but still useful. The 65 watt category is generally the category I'm most likely to say skip, and I still can't recommend any of the multi-board options here since, at least in my case, I'd run into the 65 watt power limit. The Anchor Nano 2 65 watt is probably the most available, but it still isn't my pick. The Amazon Basics 65 watt single port adapter is my choice here. It lacks PPS, but I don't have any devices that use that, so for me, it is just fine. For a compact and capable USB, See power delivery ready charger. The lack of PPS probably makes this a no-go for some people, but if it isn't only to power a laptop or a similar device, this is a great choice for compact and also a very inexpensive USB power adapter. For category four, I'm calling them compact and capable with relatively low wattage. For this lower power category, my choice is the Google 30 watt charger with a single USB-C port. It is a good performer for idle power consumption as well as a great choice for efficiency in general use. The adapter also gets the choice of smaller USB-C adapters because it has many modes of operation. Basically supports all of the lower power modes from PD to PPS. I find this to be my go-to compact these days even if it isn't the most compact adapter. Category five, the small chargers, five volt USB a chargers. The best charger here is this Samsung 15 watt model EPTA20JWE. What a model. It has a single USB A port, so if you need to power 5 volt only peripherals, this is a good choice. This isn't a bad option to replace less efficient USB A adapters if you still need to use them. In reality, I find myself using the USB A ports on the larger adapters and leaving these smaller adapters behind. So there they are, my top picks for power adapters. For the big adapters, the Anchor 747 is the greater than 140 watt class winner. For the 140 watt class or the PD 3.1 adapters, the ID Mix or one of its many clones is the choice adapter I like. The 100 watt class of multi-port adapters is ruled by Bassius and these I find get the most use for me. The adapters have the best power quality of their class, high efficiency, and at least for me, the best charging of multiple devices. The risk is unknown for the longevity of these adapters though. For the 65 watt class of adapters, I recommend single port devices, so really just the Amazon Basics 65 watt adapter. It is inexpensive and compact. For the compact and capable adapters, the Google 30 watt adapter is my choice. For the low power 5 volt only adapters, my choice is the Samsung 15 watt USB-A power adapter. But in general, I would not get a new USB-A adapter as more things switch to USB-C and the USB-C power delivery specification. Hopefully manufacturers can settle differences and stick with the power delivery protocols and use less proprietary and closed methods going forward. Looking forward to 2023, I hope power adapter manufacturers provide some more clarity on capability and continue to improve the efficiencies and features in adapters we have today. Really, some very innovative products were released in 2022, and it goes to show that one adapter doesn't fit all devices since each one is a little different. So that's about it. My top picks for power adapters from the last year. Let me know which ones you agree with and disagree with and why in the comments. I am sure some of these don't work at all for some, yet some are perfect and that is the world of power adapters. They're all different. Yeah, I know, I actually picked more than five, but in reality, the Bassius has been my daily driver and for almost all of my charging needs, meets my requirements. 
Thanks for watching. Next week's plan is to compare the two Apple Dual 35 watt adapters to find out if one is better than the other. I think this is the last current Apple power adapter I have to review. There's a calendar on the website linked in the description of upcoming videos, so check it out. It is disorganized. 2023. Yay. I have many more of these adapters to get through and lots of other topics for the upcoming year. A major goal is more power banks and power adapters, of course. See you next time. Goodbye.